Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of WP the Podcast. I'm David Blackman. And I'm Tim Streifler. Today in episode 753, we're going to talk about how to build a multilingual website in WordPress. Now, what does this mean? I'll let Tim define it in a second. Um, but it's a little bit different than just translating your site. A lot of WordPress websites and Google have it built in where they're translate like the back end, but we're talking about something totally different. So what do we mean when we say multilingual website, Tim? Yeah. So multilingual website is one website that offers the content in multiple languages. And so for companies that uh, service different audiences and, and different countries that speak different languages, uh, you can offer the content in multiple languages. And so uh, that's basically what it is. And so rather than creating separate websites for uh, each language, you basically have one website and you use tools, plugins that we're going to talk about today uh, that will assist you in the translation so that you don't have to have, you know, three, four, five different um, installs of WordPress and five different sets of plugins to manage and five different sets of, of, of themes to update and, and all of that different stuff. Right. It's one site that you can basically have, you know, if you have five different languages, five different versions of the, the piece of content. And so it makes it really, really easy. Awesome. You want to start or you want me to start? Um, I can go ahead and start. So WPML there, uh, it stands for WordPress multilingual. And uh, I would say they're the original multilingual solution for WordPress. They've been around forever. I think I used uh, this back in like 2012, 2013. And so, um, it's been around for a very long time. Um, and so basically the way WPML works is once you install it and set it up and everything you, when you're creating a piece of content, you can toggle between the different languages that you have pre-selected, and then you can input the, the languages for each post separately. And so, uh, it basically gives you three, four, five different versions, however many languages you want of that same piece of content. And then on the front end of the site, there's a, a toggle with the flags. And so you can toggle between uh, the English version of the site, if that's one of your languages, or the French version, for example. And so as far as the URL goes, it's like yourdomain.com slash fr and then whatever the page is so it it puts everything into that kind of subcategory of that language and so um yeah it makes it really good for for seo too google loves having uh mul multilingual content um now one thing i do want to say before david talks about the next one is i'm kind of i go back and forth like david and i both our websites serve uh people in so many different countries all over the world. And I've never gone the multilingual route um, because one, I think web design in general, people are more used to speaking English because HTML is in English, for example. Um, and so people are, are, so our customers typically are more familiar with English or really comfortable using translators and stuff like that. But then also a lot of the modern web browsers, specifically Chrome with one click, a user can translate the entire page automatically. Right. And so, um, so that's basically the reason why I haven't done it, but because our customers are web designers, developers in general, more savvy, they can do that. But obviously if you're selling, you know, to consumers, uh, in, in different areas of the world speak different languages, they're not as tech savvy, um, going the multilingual route may be the better option and it's worth the, the extra expense and work to, to, to get that done. Um, so I, I think, uh, sorry, one last thing I want to say before I, I turn it over to David is I think you can, um, uh, do some like auto translate, uh, as you're writing the content, but again, it's auto translated, so it's not going to be perfect. Um, so typically I think the general rule for mul multilingual is have a native speaker, do the translating to get those nuances rather than having a automated translation that just does it for you based off of artificial intelligence. Yeah. I can tell you from personal experience when I've used the Google translate to try to communicate with someone and they've looked at me like, huh? 
<laughs> it tells me that that translation, automatic translation, isn't the best. The other one that we're going to talk about, and this one, the, the, the main difference between this one and the WPML, WPML that Tim talked about, Polly Lang, um, is that it has a free version and a pro version. So if you want to test out multi multilingual before you even dip your toe in the water, because I don't think WPML has a free version, um, this one does. And it has over 600,000 users, and it's got pretty good ratings on um, WordPress.org. Um, you know, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but this thing will translate your content for you. However, as we stated, you may want to get a native speaker to that, you know, um, region of the world to confirm that it's that it is correct and stuff because conjugation, slangs, different, you know, U.S. is totally different, you know, than a lot of other countries. Some, like when so a lot of our team is is Polish, and they speak English, you know, they all learn English in school, and it's not their primary language, but they're fluent in English, and there's a lot of English words where. They don't understand what, you know, what does that mean? And I'm using, you know, um, just colloquialisms from, from my own experience and my region of the country in the United States, which is very different than Tim's region of the country in the United States. Tim might not even understand some of the words that are in South Louisiana. Yeah, you know, he true. may be like, huh, what's that? What is, what's Boudin? You know, or what's 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 these normal words to me aren't normal words. So absolutely make sure if you go that route to get yourself a native um, speaker and stuff, even though it says it translates the content because it's not going to be 100 um, percent. You know, the, what I like about Polylang is it's easy to use. It's efficient. Um, you know, it's SEO friendly just like WPML, both of these are SEO friendly. You absolutely want to make sure that you're not putting things on your site that is going to screw you with the search engines, bottom line, basically. So you want to make sure that the plugins that you add to your websites do take that into consideration and stuff when they build them and whatnot. So uh, two great plugins for multilingual websites, WPML and Polylang. Check them out. We've got the links in the description uh, of YouTube, as well as on the website and in the podcast platform that you're listening this to, listening to this podcast on. While I'm saying that, I'm going to go ahead and make a, a request and a plea. If you're enjoying WP the podcast and you are ecstatic that Tim and I are doing podcast daily again, it would be amazing if you could give us a like, a thumbs up, and a subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube. If you're listening to us on your favorite podcast platform like Spotify or Apple Podcasts or any of those platforms, if you would give us a review, it helps people find the podcast better. Um, and honestly, we just like it. We think it's cool when people you know, give us a rating and stuff and be honest. We're not, you know, I mean, would love it if you gave us a five star, <laughs> but, uh, you know, give us feedback. If there's something we can do better and improve upon, let us know. Um, so yeah, there's that Tim. I think that's it. Yeah. Got another great topic for tomorrow. We're going to talk about how to make your website fully accessible meaning that's what it means we'll tell you what it means tomorrow tim until tomorrow i'll see you then take care bye-bye